Welcome to another episode of Mystery Bible. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. We're continuing the study of the Nephilim, and we took a detour last uh, the last episode, and we focused a little on who I believe were the first female that uh, slept with the Nephilim, and we talked a little about that. I showed you uh, that the seed. There's an offspring war that was initiated in Genesis chapter 3 uh, when God um, declared that they would be, that uh, the devil would uh, bruise his head and that the offspring would bruise his head and the devil would bruise his ankles. And so we, we took a look and we saw uh, Cain and as you know, Cain had committed murder and he killed his brother uh, Abel and the Bible tells us that he left the presence of God, which is a very important. Once he left the presence of God, he and his descendants actually walked away from from God and knowing God. And the other, once Adam and Eve slept with each other again, Seth was born. And that is the line that um, the Messiah would eventually come through. But um, I just wanted to give you a, a brief recap. We had Lamech, we talked about Lamech, and he he had his family, he married two women, and that uh, they had given, both of them had given him children, and the daughter, Nama, she made the deals with the Nephilims, I mean, with the angels, and the Nephilims were given birth. At the same time, we saw that Enoch was around. Enoch actually had, he had translated to heaven. We have Methuselah that was there, he gave birth. Mm-hmm to Lamech, which is Noah's uh, father. Noah then was given birth. But these guys' names mean something. Methuselah's name has a meaning to it. It says that his he was like a spear tip, um, or, and that as a result of that, at the time of, of the Nephilim, at that time, they were uh, preparing for war. And then you had... Uh, next name that was mentioned is Lamech, and Lamech means a destroyer. The names of these men were given and represented the time and what was going on. Methuselah also, his name also means that when he, when he, there's another reference also to, to his name, and um, it is in reference to the flood. So after Lamech was born and he gave birth to Nua, um, it said, they shall be rest, and his name means rest, and they shall be rest. And that rest is will come at the, um, at the flood. And so this is basically the setup that is coming on as what was happening with all the families. But I've gone and I told you about that the incursion happened somewhere about 3,550, uh, BC, and then the the first set of Nephilim, they lived for th- uh, 500 years, which would have taken us to uh, 3050 BC, and they, we would have a remainder of uh, 700 years to equal uh, 1200 years, 12,000 years that they were there on the earth in all total before the flood, because they also came back after the flood for another 12. Uh, 100 years. Anyway, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll get back into the subject of the uh, the Nephilims um, and go about that and learn much more as we can after these. Welcome back to Mystery Bible, and um, we're going to continue the study of the Nephilims. Uh, what I wanted to do was just do a brief recap of the, um, with the uh, the original boys, I would say the, um, the giants. And when these guys came on, on the scene, the book of Enoch tells us that um, they began to do all kinds of crazy things, that they they consumed everything. They consumed the fish, they consumed everything. And after they started consuming all the animals that they turned on people, and started consuming them as well. And the earth, the earth, the Bible tells us, just began to become corrupt. But also at the time that they were here, you got to remember that their fathers also 
were here and those fallen angels were here and those guys also were doing a lot of um, havoc on the earth while they were here besides sleeping with the women they were building kingdoms um, and we know of many of those as a result and uh, i want to regress a little here about the watchers the watchers are a class of angels that are uh, set loose on the earth to to survey or to to manage the earth or, or to uh, have allocations over certain cities and and um, towns and all these different things. And it was only 200 of them that said, let us uh, do this deed with women. So there were thousands and hundreds of thousands of them that did not. Because the Bible tells us that it was a third of the angels that fell. And it also tells us that that's, that's a numbers innumerable. So we don't know, but we know that a third of them were deceived and brought, came with uh, Lucifer. But in they had assignments and a part of the council of God where they would have to report to the council of God and give report as to what was going on. And we saw that in the book of Job when God, uh, when the sons of God were coming before Yahweh and telling them what, what's, you know, what was making their report. And God, uh, it says that Lucifer was amongst them and God asked him, where are you from? What, what have you been doing? And he begins to re re relate to God what he's been doing. But so uh, I just wanted to to bring that information to you because the uh, the watchers, they were on this story about the Nephilim is only about 200 of them after they have made that decision to come down. So, but uh, they um, they were given assignments, uh, all of them, and they all they are all over towns, as I mentioned, countries and so forth. But the Bible says that we wrestle not against principalities and powers. So uh, these guys who are princes that ran countries and oversaw and was responsible for different regions. We see in, in the Bible talks about uh, the angel that was over, the prince that was over Greece and, and uh, the prince that was over Babylon and all these different things. These are all uh, watchers. So if you look at the Bible, the Bible talks about all of this stuff. It's just that church and the leaders don't talk about it. But the Bible is very clear about who these guys were and what they do. And so now we're going to get a little glimpse into to what these guys' fathers were doing. It tells us that in the book of Enoch that uh, they were performing uh, harsh deeds or blasphemous um, utterance and sexual deeds on male, female, and amongst humans and on animals. It says also they took a note that uh, 200 angels choose uh, animals on which to perform on natural acts on men, women, and animals, 200 donkeys, 200 asses, 200 rams of flocks, 200 goats, 200 beasts of the field of every animal from every bird for sexual acts, regardless of species. The outcome of the demonic corruption was violence, perversion, and a brood of monstrous beings. And, um, they defile themselves, they begot giants and monsters and so forth. So that's the background. There's a lot of stuff that was happening, guys, uh, that I didn't even go into about uh, when the angels were here. And again, they were building kingdoms and, and doing experiments with the animals and having sex and creating all kinds of monsters. And these things were real. So a Leviathan is another uh, creature that the Bible talks about, and um, their documentation outside of the Bible that talks about uh, the monster Leviathan as well. The um, the the story of Gilgamesh I mentioned uh, monsters there as well. That one of them that he had to fight, and so the Titans, as I said, they were having dreams that the world is going to be destroyed and that their destruction was going to be coming. There's even a, a passage where they believe that uh, Gilgamesh was the one that was speaking when he was talking amongst the sons of Samyaza and so forth, saying, hey, it is fruitless for us to fight against. He says, uh, Gilgamesh was stating that I'm, 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 I'm able to take on anyone and, and overcome them. 
but our enemies are who we're trying to fight are from heaven and we can't get to them. And so it's kind of fruitless that um, uh, to deal with it anyway, because, you know, these guys were up against angels, mighty angels, uh, archangels. We're talking about guys like Michael, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, Gabriel, and all the other ones. There's so many more of those. But um, after we talked about uh, Gabriel had his assignment to shorten the days of the um, those guys, we still had some of these monsters and stuff like that was going on uh, here at the time also uh, that the 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 500. I mean the the original uh, Nephilims were judged. Their parents, those 200 angels. Watchers are sons of God. They were judged at the time. Uh, um, Azazel was sent into the to Uriel, took him into the desert, buried him, put sharp, opened the, the 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 ground. It says, buried him, put sharp rocks, covered him with sharp rocks, and he's there waiting for judgment until the fiery judgment. And also all the other watchers. Uh, the book of Enoch talks about all the other ones, the ones that are connected and tied in as the prince of the, uh, the air that are tied in with different countries. And those also will be judged. And there, uh, there was um, a scripture about that and also in the book of, of Enoch and Jubilee and all these places. So as we we talked about earlier, that there is this, this piece with the angels after the first the first set were gone, as I, as I mentioned. You had these other guys were just remaining, and um, they, for a season, um, it seems that they were just in the background, building and working and doing all the different things you have. But they were, many of these guys spread out all over. Um, you could say that uh, Mount Hamron area was home base, uh, but they weren't. And uh, uh, we talked about the women who made deals with them and so forth. Um, so now this 700 years, a couple of things were happening within the, uh, the seeds or, or the offsprings between Cain and uh, the offspring of um, uh, uh, Seth. Uh, we talked about the birth of all of their the uh, genealogy of the the family of Seth, we talked about the genealogy with Cain. And what we noticed that after the Bible never spoke again about Cain's descendants, as far as uh, the sons of Tubal Cain and uh, Jubal and 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 Jabal, but we know that they impacted to this day. And as I mentioned, we talked about them becoming uh, uh, the father. You see that uh, that the corruption of man is beginning to get uh, greater and greater and greater because it is as uh, the corruption gets worse that God is beginning to repent that he ever made man. And you can chronicle some of what these guys were doing by the book of Jasher and the book of Jubilee that talks about them in detail as to how and what they were doing with these beings. Again, they were genetically altering different material, skin material, like the angels had a different skin material than the natural man. And so their children's, children began to experiment as their fathers did. And so, and their, their, their grandfathers and so forth. And these experiments began to manifest and God, the Bible tells us that he repented that he created man. And uh, so he told um, uh, Uriel to go and tell um, uh, Noah that um, he, that man's days are numbered at 120 days that he will be with mankind. And that basically was God giving 120 days for him and uh, Methuselah actually to preach the gospel of uh, repentance to the people. The people refused who were at the time, uh, the, uh, the watchers had such an impact on them, overseers of them, uh, that they choose these guys as their gods over Yahweh. 
And so they choose to worship uh, these gods, these princes of the air. Um, uh, as a result, uh, God says, enough. Um, Methuselah and uh, Noah began to teach. Within what was happening was the, it's the last 120 uh, uh, years in the life of Methuselah that things began to accept to the point where, as they say, all hell break loose. There was that uh, all flesh had become corrupt, meaning the animals and, and everything, all flesh, all is all, not just mankind, all flesh, birds, uh, cattle, cross-breeding, uh, sleeping, these monsters that had become um, part of the society at that time. And it tells us that God became extremely upset. And he said, that's it. And he tells Noah to build an ark and um, he gives them the dimensions and so forth. Uh, what we're going to do is, again, take a little break. I was just trying to give you continue and over gapping because there's so much there truly is a lot to know about these nephilims and it's a shame that uh, the church has never really talked about these subjects because it is from here it's from these creations that we get demons that we get evil spirits these um, and that we get the watchers as i mentioned to you in ephesians it says that we are we we wrestle not against flesh and blood against principalities those are the guys that are over the prince. Well, when the book of Daniel talked about when he was praying and he said that um, the prince of Persia held him up. And so these are spiritual beings that are tied into the leadership of our countries. And um, it talks about when war, Joshua, when he came to, to, to fight the battle, that one of the commanders in the army of God came down and talked to him. So our natural world is tied into the spiritual, and there is much to study. It is a vast study when we come to dealing with the uh, Nephilims and the Watchers. And again, I, I said to you, there is only 200 that decided to um, to sleep with the women, change uh, uh, sleeping with women for knowledge. There were thousands and hundreds of thousands more that uh, did not participate within that um, uh, 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 decision to do that. So, uh, they're still around. The 200s were, were held down, but the others are, are still on the earth. And that's truly who the Bible tells us that um, is who we we wrestle against. So. Uh, one of the things is that you have to, in warfare, you have to know your enemy, enemies. And so I believe that's for, this is one of the reasons why the church is so weak, because we don't know who our enemies are. Because all those evil spirits are Nephilims. All those demons are of those monsters that they, that they created. And so these are the people that we are dealing with, and not people are, uh, outside of our flesh and blood. So... We're going to be right back after this message, and we're going to continue our study on the Nephilim. Mystery Bible, as uh, we have been talking about the Nephilim, we're still talking, uh, continuing that conversation. I kind of like just giving you information, but there's so much about this topic, about the Nephilim, and I do believe that um, you should spend some time gathering information about that. You could find books on the, um, they have lots of books on Amazon. I know Kindle book has some, you can gather all these information because I do believe it's an important piece of information that you and I need to know as believers. But uh, let's get back into it. As I was saying that Methuselah, he lived and his name means after dies um, that it shall come. And it was in reference to the flood. But um, the Bible doesn't say much about it, about what was going on. All it does say in Genesis chapter uh, 6, verses 5, is, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him 
at his heart. And then it tells us that God said it, um, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created for the fa from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented him that he had made them. And then it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And it talks about uh, that how he was perfect in his generation. And it, it was basically dealing with mentioning that a genetic, genetically he was pure, different from the others that uh, it says that they were all flesh had become corrupt in other readings in the book of Jasher and Jubilee. What these other books gave us is the backstory to a lot of the things that was happening there. And the backstory is that, uh, uh, as I've mentioned to you before, the first thing in the first 500 years and after that, the judgment came in Enoch 10, 12, and he says, when their sons have slain one another and they have seen their destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations under the hills of the earth until the days of judgment, until the day of judgment is accomplished. And as I mentioned to you earlier, that that was just the 200. There are other watchers that are still uh, overseeing uh, the earth because uh, they still have the, uh, their assignments. They still have to um, come before God and stuff like that. And uh, David talks about that in Psalms 80, 82. But um, uh, uh, these 200 were, were, were punished. And uh, what happened uh, as a result of uh, what they, they had done, it appears that in the last 120 years of Methuselah's life and Noah, that the earth, that these Nephilims began to really uh, uh, excel in their work. It says, but in the latter days of Methuselah, the sons of men turned from the Lord. They corrupted the earth. They robbed and plummeted each other, and they rebelled against God. They went contrary to everything. They corrupted their ways and would not listen to the voice of uh, Methuselah, but rebelled against him. And that is found in Jasher chapter 4, verses 4. And uh, in Jasher 4, 18, it says, And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husband according to their choice and the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixtures of animals of one species with another in order therewith to provoke the lord and god saw that the whole earth it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways on the earth, and all men and all animals. That's in Joshua chapter 4, verse 8. And again, verse 18, sorry. And these books, as I mentioned, they're giving you the behind the scenes. Um, uh, in the book of Jubilee, it reads, uh, And after this, they sinned against the beasts and the earth and all the uh, all that move it and walk it on the earth. And much blood was shed on the earth and every imagination and desire of men um, and vanity and evil continually. Again, this is in the book of Jubilee uh, 724. And you can read all of those things once you get those books. And it kind of lines up with Genesis 612 and it says, uh, this is what leads up to the flood. And um, it is my opinion that uh, since there was this seed war, as I mentioned to you, or, um, uh, you know, offspring war that um, was initiated in chapter in tr three of Genesis, that uh, uh, the uh, uh, dear assignment of the the kids i guess these were the kids of the kids and they were now uh totally gone crazy plus they knew that the end was coming in many ways because methuselah was uh, preaching 
um, as well as Noah for that 120 years. And then after Methuselah dies, it was seven days after he died that the flood came. But there was a couple of things that uh, was going on. Again, all flesh had become corrupt. Uh, that means everything, animals, as I read to you before. And um, uh, God had to get families out of this in order to carry on the seed and uh, to get this offspring that will bruise the head of Lucifer. And so just before they get on the ark, God tells Noah that he has to uh, get wives for his sons. And so he had his three sons in order, like, you know, God wants to carry on the seed. You have to have a woman in order to have children. And so he tells uh, Noah to pick um, some, some wives for his sons. So Noah picks these, these three women I think it was about seven days from what we can read, roughly is within that seven day period that he picked his uh, wives for his sons and brought them onto the ark. So the question is this, that um, if all flesh was corrupted at this time, I believe, it is my belief that maybe a couple of those, those wives were corrupted through the bloodline because we have giants after that. And remember I told you the after that were two periods, after the, the Titans and after the, the flood. And so it is my belief that, uh, 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 that some of those women that Noah had choose for his son's wives had corrupted bloodline because as I mentioned again, they show up in um, through the lineage of Ham and Canaan. And I'll explain to you what, um, because there's a great mystery in the Bible that a lot of pastors don't talk about a particular incident that is very important in uh, to understand why God was doing certain things. Because in the Old Testament, we see God uh, telling people to destroy, to kill whole entire families, villages, animals, everything. And when you get to understand this particular story, you'll understand why. And so because God loves us so much, he came up with a plan once we fell that he has to restore it through us. And that was the provision of the Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. And so now we look at this entire earth just totally in a mess. And so God is looking at his apple of his eye, his prime creation that he loves so much. As the Bible says, he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. So he loves us so much and he sees this destruction upon this earth that was caused by the... Um, insurgent of the of the the watchers and their children and all the evil that came about and so god says he, i have to take them out in order to save the seed or the offspring so that we can have this restoration through salvation that he had planned the uh, this is one particular time that the offspring war or the seed war was in full bloom. We had uh, these uh, Nephilims, as it said earlier, that they were um, they were judges at that time. They, they were rulers, and, and of course, because of their size and all the different things, it says, and their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands. So this was all over according to their choice. Whoever they wanted, they took. And um, they took, their appetites were insatiable. They took animals, beasts of the field, fowl of the air. Uh, they taught mixtures. They had sex with everything. It was just madness. And so um, this was in the book of Jasher, chapter 4, verse 18, basically telling us uh, that this seed war was in full bloom. Uh, coming from the side of uh, Lucifer and these um, uh, and the kingdom of darkness, 
And so God now has to rescue us. And um, he initiated, he told Noah, he gives him the, the dimension that he needs. He said, build this ark. Uh, Methuselah is, is preaching, Noah is preaching, Methuselah dies. And then after Methuselah dies, seven days later, actually God tells uh, um, tells uh, Noah, it's time after Noah have picked these women for his sons, Noah and his wife, and they got uh, collected all the animals that God told them that they needed to collect, all the different species, now to do this thing all over again. He loves us again, as I said, he loves us so much and he wants us to be redeemed that he had to protect the seed and this was his way of protecting the seeds. And I think because of the size of these giants and so forth, that he had to create an avenue whereby he can uh, uh, take care of all of them for us. I am excited and I just want to tell every one of my listeners and those my subscribers, I thank you so much for following me on my on this uh, podcast. There's so much for us to do here that I want to do personally to explain the Bible uh, truly so that you and I will understand who we are and how God the Father loves us so much and that he does everything for us. He is a father. He's not one that uh, comes down and torture us because I was I grew up in the church and the Old Testament they say is the father and they, they uh, deem him as if he's this vengeful father that is always killing people and brutalizing people and that's all I knew from the Old Testament and then Jesus comes and he's the peaceful one and all this kind of stuff but that people is not who he is because Jesus said if you have seen me you have seen the father so then we know that the father is a peaceful wallet and it says in the scripture that he he wishes that none should perish and so that's why he's so forgiving long suffering but this is the father this is not jesus it tells us the qualities of our father who oh, he is and because he loved us so saw what was being done by these half-breed beings and all the other watchers that he had mercy upon us and caused the flood so that you and I can get Jesus, so that he can come and die on the cross and redeem us back to the Father so that we can have that relationship that Adam had with the Father before he fell. And so I want to praise God and thank him for what he did here and what he did at the cross and what he's doing in, in our lives. And so... I want to encourage each and every one of you guys out there to let you know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, the Holy Spirit loves you, and beg of you to get into the Word and study. Pull out other books and read and get a full picture so you can understand the love of God so that you and I can learn who we are so that we can be effective and change this world. Thank you for listening to Mystery Bible. Let's walk through the Bible and learn of God and his beautiful mercies, and all that he has provided for us, that we may become effective for his kingdom and change this world. Check in every week for a new episode. Search for Mystery Bible on Anchor FM, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Breaker, Outcasts, Radio Public, and many more.